Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are going to be looking at the tools on my wall. I've got a lot of tools here, but the question is, which ones do I actually use and which ones are just sitting there on the wall? Today we're going to be looking specifically at saws and I'll probably be doing other videos on planes and other things. So if there's something specific you want to see, let me know. But for right now, let's take a look at these. So here's my saw till, and if you want to see it, I have a whole video on making this as well as making all the parts on my back wall. And in here I have a whole pile of saws. Biggest ones over there, smallest ones over here, Japanese saws, other pole saws and things like that. So over here, I've got a cheap Irwin big box store saw, and I use this whenever I want to show that you can do it with a cheap saw. This particular one is duller than dull, and you can't sharpen it because it's hard teeth, but when I want to show that you can do it with cheap, junky equipment, this is the one I pull out. For actual regular use, I almost never use this one. Next, I have my favorite saw. This is an actual hand saw. It's 26 inches long. It's made by Atkins. It has five PPI teeth and it's set for rip cutting. This thing will rip down wood incredibly fast and incredibly fun. It has a handle that I love. This is probably the panel saw or hand saw that I use more than anything else. Next, I have a Distin crosscut saw. This one has an eight PPI crosscut tooth. It is a panel saw, not a hand saw because it's only 24 inches long. It if I'm doing moderate cross cut where I want to have a little bit cleaner cut but I'm doing a longer one, this is probably what I do. Or if I'm going to be cross cutting at my saw bench, this is the one I'm going to use. After that, I have four more panel saws that I don't use that often. Uh, this one is a large rip saw but it's got the thumb hole so sometimes I'd like to show that. This one I'd actually like to do a restoration on. It was given to me a while ago and it's riveted together and there's just a bunch of things on this that are uh, less than desirable, but I'd like to show it because it has a lot of fun things on me. So if you'd like to see a video on this particular weirdo, uh, let me know. I actually don't know who made it. The etch has been worn off. The medallion has been riveted rather than a medallion. It's just got a lot of history to it, and it's kind of an interesting one. Next up, I have a little bit of a finer crosscut. This is a 10 PPI Distin. Uh, it's probably from like the 1920s. It's a very nice one. I did a video on restoring the handle on it. And if I want to do a fine crosscut at the saw bench, this is probably the one I'm going to pull out. This goes relatively quickly, and I generally keep this one sharp. I don't use it that often, um, but I do like this one. Anytime I need to do a fine cross cut that's a little bit longer, this is the one I pull out. The last two here, I don't think I've ever used in a video. This one is a fine rip cut. It's a, what, an 8 PPI. And if ever I wanted to do a little bit more of a fine work, tenon work, I might pull this one out. Um, it needs a little bit of work to clean up, but honestly, I've never used it. And if I really needed a finer rip cut, I might pull out my bow saw um, if my regular tenon saw wouldn't reach it. Last up, I have a very fine rip cut. Uh, this one is so dull that um, I, I really wouldn't be able to use it without sharpening it. And it's so dull that I'm actually thinking about turning it into a crosscut saw. It has no name brand on it, no etch. It's a really cheap one, but it's got a small handle. So it's a little bit tight on my hand, but for my kids or my wife, this one may actually work well. And so I've always thought about fixing it up for them. I just have never done it. I just don't use these last two saws. Next up, we can move over here to my back saws. And I have a lot more back saws because I tend to use those quite a bit. My general go-to tenon saw is a Veritas tenon saw. Now this does have a little bit of a kink up here, which means the last two inches are a bit of a pain. And I've always found that annoying, but the feel and balance of this one is one that I just keep going back to. It's the one I tend to grab. So this is the tenon saw that I use more than any other. The next two are also tenon saws. They're ones that I try to use. This one is a beautiful old Atkins back saw, uh, steel plate, nice and long, nice and deep. This is the one I should want to use because it has this gorgeous handle. It feels good in the hand. The problem is with this steel back, it's relatively heavy. And I just don't find myself reaching for this. I like the lighter feel of the Veritas. But this one is so gorgeous, I want to use it. I just don't reach for it as much. And then I've got this tenon saw, uh, which is more, this is actually more of a sash saw, but this is a, a modern steel black. It was probably made in the 70s or 80s. Um, really crummy handle. I keep this one as the one I pull out when I want to show someone how to use cheap tools. Uh, this one I probably picked up at a garage sale for five or six bucks. You'd often see these sold uh, with these plastic miter boxes. It's a really cheap thing, but I do use it from time to time though, probably only like once a year. Next up is my most used saw in the entire shop. 
This is a Veritas Carcassaw Crosscut uh, 14 PPI. I, I love this saw. I use this thing all the time. I have probably sharpened a good half inch off of this. I, I use it regularly. This is the most used saw in the shop for joinery work. This is what I would suggest being the first saw that anyone pick up is a tenon saw, decent length, nice functioning, and with the price balance on this, it's a very, very good saw. After that, we start getting to more of the detail. I have my Bearcat dovetail saw, and this thing is just gorgeous. I love this. It is so much fun to use. It is beautiful. It's comfortable. Unfortunately, he doesn't make them anymore, and that makes me want to use this even more. It is a beautiful saw that feels good in the hand, and I've done so much work with this thing. I love it. Next, we have a Pax tenon saw, and this is one I did a video on reshaping the handle because a lot of Pax saws are very uncomfortable and beefy. Uh, this one is really nice. I, I, if this was a little bit longer, I probably would use it far more. I like the longer length of the Veritas saw, but as a beginner in price range, if you want a brass back, this is a great deal, and it's a folded brass back. So this is a really good functioning saw. If it were just a little bit longer, I'd love it even more. Here is a Sheffield dovetail saw. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. I did a video on restoring and cleaning this up. There were a whole bunch of chunks missing out of it, and it needed a lot of work. Uh, this is also a canted saw, so it gets narrow at the tip, which a lot of old back saws do. If I'm not going to be using my Bearcat dovetail saw, this is the one I pull out because it's just gorgeous. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of fun to use. Last for the back saws, I have two different PAX saws. Uh, these are both what they classify as dovetail saws. They're a little tall for a dovetail saw. They're not quite as long as I'd like. And they're a little bit heavier than general, but they're folded back. And with a little bit of work on the handles, you can actually make these things really nice. They do come with the split nuts. So, you know, for the price, these are phenomenal. You're probably going to want to do some work on the handle and make them a little more comfortable. But, um, yeah, if I didn't have so many other dovetail saws, I probably would use these. So we've talked about the saws that I use all the time, the saws I never use, the saws I use all the time, the saws I never use. And now we're going to move over to the saws that I only use when I need to demonstrate them. Uh, these are Japanese-style pole saws. Ja pull saws are relatively cheap. You can get them pretty much anywhere for a great price. They are very easy to learn because they cut exactly the way you set them up. The downside is they are very hard to control. They are difficult to maneuver and change. Um, you have to really over control these to get them to do what you want. With western saws, the problem is they're so easy to control that it's incredibly easy to over control them. You turn it any little bit and they suddenly go wear off the line. Whereas with a pole saw, they tend to track really nicely because the leading tooth is on the opposite side of the board that you can't control. I've got several videos on that. Honestly, I don't use them that often. They use a different body mechanic. Um, I've got a couple Ryobis, I've got a, a couple of Dazukis, I have one flush cut saw. I only use them um, if I want to show using a Japanese saw, or if I'm working with thin stock, small detailed stuff and I need to make a long rip cut. Long rip cuts on thin stock, I don't want to use a big panel saw. The rip is too deep to use my tenon saw. In that case, these saws are fantastic with a smaller rip, to, rip cut tooth. They can do a long, thin, delicate rip cut. And then there's a bunch of other saws that I haven't mentioned. I've got my keyhole saw, I use this for doing plunge cuts or detail cuts like on the Rubo book stands. Uh, this comes out very useful. I have my jeweler and coping saws up here. And then here I've got the turning saw. I don't use my jeweler and coping saws as much as I do the turning saw or the new turning saw that we just made this last week. I haven't had a chance to use this in a project yet, but I really like it. Anytime I need a coping saw, that's probably the one I'm going to reach for. And then, of course, I have my Rubo style frame saw. I have my European bow saw. Um, I've got a buck saw down in here. And then normally I have a couple large crosscut saws, but those are out in the shed right now. So yes, I have a few saws, and most of these I have a video talking about, or a video restoring it, or a video cleaning it up, or a video sharpening it, or a video making it. Uh, I use them most all the time with a few exceptions that I bring up here just to show different methods and different personalities. Um, on a daily basis, I'm probably only using about, on a weekly basis, I'm probably only using four or five of these saws. On a monthly basis, I'm probably using about a third of it. On a yearly basis, I'm probably using about two thirds of it. Um, some of the saws, I just 
don't use that often, such as ones that I still need to restore, or the pack saws that uh, they just don't fit my design as much. Great saws, just don't have as much need for them because I've got other dovetail saws already. So if there's something else you'd like to see in the shop or something that you'd be interested in seeing why I have those tools, what I actually use on a regular basis, we'll have a few other videos like this coming up. If you do have any questions, thoughts, ideas, let me know that as well. I would love to hear what you would like to see me use or what do you think I should use more of. Let me know that down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I can. Also, I wanna say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, members on here on the channel, everyone who's clicked that little join button down below. Thank you. Honestly, without you and patrons, this channel wouldn't exist. Uh, we are sponsored completely by you, the viewer. So thank you for that. If you'd like to see more and like to keep us going, you can always find out information about Patreon in the description down below or click the little join button and become a member. We do have extra perks for both. So I think I'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So yeah, you saw what I did there? Boy, you think you would have saw that coming. You know I'm not blind because honestly, I, I saw it all.